workers of the group of Maho Sonesta and also of the Great Bay Beach Hotel that on Wednesday, March the 28th at 11 a.m., they are invited at the Labor Department to a meeting. In that meeting, they would get clear information on their rights, their privilege, the outcome of the meeting that was held so that they can also have clarity on their situation and what is actually in the resolvement of the different questions and concerns that they had. The resolutions and the way forward would be presented to them at the department. I thought it was very important to spread the news to make sure that the workers, the workers of these two groups would be present tomorrow at 11 a.m. at the labor office to receive this information. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. sharp at the labor office, and that's being Wednesday, March the 28th. So we are expecting to see all um, the workers that presented their concern in a group in a group a couple of weeks ago, we are expecting to see them back so that they can receive the update of this situation and they can know what is the progress and what has been done and what would be the resolution in this case. Uh, GEBE um, is doing like the, the going belly up. Uh, this is the information what they're sharing with, uh, with employees that they're going belly up and um, now they, they threaten employers to cut um, the um, Christmas bonus. Um, GEBE also threatened them to cut um, the AOV that the GBE have more than 25 years um, paying for their employees. Um, the beautiful part of everything is that um, in, it was um, March 16th where GBE had a meeting with its employees and informed them that management and union agree to stop the, the um, Christmas bonus for 2018 and as well as the AOV. And at no time we didn't have that discussion. Um, so I find it very, um, how you say, ridiculous where uh, a management could keep a meeting with its employees and tell them such a lie, which is, um, you know, it's something you have to bring to the table for parties to discuss first. So when we understood that, the March 16th, we immediately we turned around, we kept an urgent meeting, which was um, Friday gone, and we informed the staff, uh, which is our members, that uh, at no time that was not an agreement. Uh, we also read out the, the email that we sent from Mr. Chittick, uh, the email is clearly uh, where we said that based on the article in the CLA, Article 8, 8.1, where it gave management the rights to control the, the merit increase, and that for that reason, then we have to agree on the two weeks lump sum. But while we agree on the two weeks lump sum, we line up a list of things that has, must happen in that company. Uh, that company has a, a crazy hiring, um, which we indicate they have to go through a manpower assessment of formation plan in order to control that. They have to do a function evaluation because they don't have the right way of, of um, give the, the functions them a, a salary in order to control the salary structure. We also indicate that the performance evaluation has to be, um, a new performance evaluation has to be implemented. An amendment of the article that gave them the rights of decide of what increase they will give the employees must be taken off the table. Um, so that's where we are with, with the company. Um, we're supposed to have a meeting coming with management the 29th of March, which is on Thursday coming for two o'clock, where we, we look into sign agreement with management of GB in order to get this 
points them off the floor. Uh, the other topic is that um, Mr. Richardson, who is the chair of the board, then called me on Saturday, March 17th, and informed me that he's calling me in his capacity of the, the chairman of the board, and asked me the question of where did I got the information that the managing board and the board of director has um, um, problem with each other. So I inform him in my capacity as the union representative and the president of the board, I don't have no obligation to give him no answer. But if he's so pleased to get the answer, he should then call a meeting with the managing board, the members of the board of directors, and the union, and will gladly inform them where we got the information from. So a three by three meeting where we could definitely put whatever situation it have between the managing board and the board of directors, that which includes the union, aside so there's no more pointing fingers. We're still waiting for that um, meeting to be called. has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. I wanted to take this opportunity to wish those that have served St. Martin over the last months, over the last few years, uh, since the election time, that um, it has been a, a real privilege to work with the 14 other individuals in here. And I, um, whether whichever party um, the members of parliament were from, I think it is, a, again, an honor and a privilege to be able to serve the people of St. Martin, and it is um, also an honor to be able to work with these individuals. Like I stated before, not always on the same line in terms of politics, because again, there are parties that um, not divide us, but have certain philo philosophies and differences of opinion. But I think that one thing that we know in here with all the members of parliament is that St. Martin comes first. And I've always stated to members of parliament that while we might, again, wear different political colors or come from different political institutions, we have 
one common goal, and that is to push St. Martin forward. And those that don't want to push St. Martin forward, I think those are what I would consider the true enemies of the state, and that once we are together, those are the ones that we can tackle. I don't want to say goodbye to any one of the members in particular, because I've learned one thing in politics, you never say never in politics. So oh, even those that probably didn't run on a list, um, somehow can always get back in here for some reason or another. And I, I don't put um, that past them, because I have seen some stranger things happen um, in life, and stranger things happen in government. I also want to um, say to the, the staff that has been working in here um, for all the, the different um, political organizations, again, it has also been a great pleasure um, working with them. Um, you know, I don't know who will be coming back and who will not, but again, it has been there. And then at the same time, Madam Chair, it's, um, I'm standing here today as a member of the UP faction. It's a little bit of a, also a, a hurtful position to say that, you know, um, it'll be the last time that we're standing here as a member of the UP faction. And um, hopefully, God's willing, um, giving us the, the ability to, to live on, that we will be standing here in a different function in about a week or so. So I would like to thank the United People's Party for electing those of us that have served under that banner. I would like to thank all of those that had pushed the party forward in particular. And I would like to thank the ones that have been serving under the UP banner in particular, um, Mr. Claret Connor, Mr. Franklin Myers, Mr. Bijlani, and also Ms. Leonard as well um, for serving under the UP banner. And I think that we've had the common goals and we've always pushed for St. Martin first. And again, like I said, my um, great respect to all of those members that have served the council. God bless St. Martin. St. Martin are switching to a more rewarding experience. The Whip MasterCard Fun Miles credit card, better known as My Card. Earn one fun mile for every $2 spent, even abroad and online. This will quickly get you a ton of fun miles to redeem for travel, shopping, food, fuel, and much more. But there's more to My Card worldwide acceptance, an EMV chip for extra security, and 250 free fun miles with first use. Switch to my card today at WIB. This year, we're starting our fourth annual awareness um, campaign. The minister expounded on key aspects of the campaign, but what I'm going to do is give a, a general overview of what we plan to do this year. So it's our four, fourth annual sports awareness action plan, and included in this plan are three key areas. 
The first is the sport conference. Uh, this, is, this is done on a yearly basis and it gives us the opportunity as the Department of Sports, as government, to connect with the various sports organizations, uh, give them the information that they, they need or requested or require, um, outline what our plans are as government and as the department, and also to find out what um, they are doing also so that we can better, we can better plan sports and develop sports uh, collaboratively. Uh, this year, the sport conference is being organized in collaboration with the Netball Association, and we're going to be covering areas such as good governance, child protection, fundraising and marketing, and managing individuals and groups. And it's important that we get the buy-in from the different sports organizations so that we could uh, better handle and, and, and manage sports in general. The second area is the sports conference. Um, this particular, the, sorry, the sport open house, um, this particular event is for us as government to also support the sports organizations to better uh, bring information to the general public about what they do. Um, key here is how we can bring about information regarding the organizations to the schools, for example, because we would like to see more participation at the younger level, at the younger age. Um, so we connect the organizations with the schools by bringing the schools um, to one of our facilities so that the organizations can highlight what they do and, and um, gain membership. And then uh, there's, there's another element to it, a open house on the, the second day where we invite the general public to participate and see what's on offer by the different sports organizations. The third element is the Brown Pelican Sports Awards. Um, and this one is, we find is very important for the community to see what is going on in sports and for us to also highlight uh, what the different sports organizations, the different contributors to sports, the coaches, the volunteers, um, what everybody has been doing. Um, we even highlight legends in sports so that we can bring awareness to those persons who in years gone by contributed to sports. We bring awareness to what they have done and how they have brought sports forward. So these three elements within the sports awareness campaign allows us as government to highlight what's going on within our communities, highlight what's going on with our sports organizations, um, and inform everyone of what's happening, and also for us to connect and support and facilitate sports and its development as much as possible. Um, it is important to note, as the minister spoke about the, the mixer, Following the conference, which is supposed to be on April 5th and 6th, following the conference on the 6th, we're having a sports mixer. And this is an opportunity for the business community, as the minister pointed out, um, to connect with the different sports organizations, um, to find out also with our foundation, the National Sports Institute, what they are doing and what IRMA, how IRMA impacted our different sports um, facilities and bring awareness to that and um, see how we can all partner together to bring sports to the level in which we want to see it and to bring our facilities to the level in which we want to see it. So we also have um, the president of the Sports Olympic Federation as well. And um, this mixer also brings the different sports organizations together, um, giving them the opportunity to speak to the business community, to showcase what they do to show the importance of our facilities and what it is that we all collectively do in the development, in the interest of the development of sport. So firstly, I spoke about, spoke about Mr. Cornett. Um, Mr. Cornett is going to briefly also speak about what's happening with our facilities and um, the importance of supporting uh, the endeavors of the NSI. And then um, Mr. Bell is also going to speak about the speak on behalf of the different sports organizations and the, and the development that we have within sport because collectively we've been um, doing a lot of things trying to bring sports to, to that next level. Um, we want to see more sports participation. We want to see St. Martin on the map in terms of international um, participation in, in sport as well. So collectively we're, we're working towards that bigger picture of um, promoting sports and developing sports. It's been said that behind every door 
possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. One. Two. Three. Four. This is how common it is to develop a mental illness. One out of every four. 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 But there is hope. Today, most mental illnesses can be managed and treated. Visit your general doctor if you feel concerned about your thoughts and behaviors or have some difficulty dealing with some of life's issues. If you have been diagnosed and are suffering from a mental illness, keep in mind these four points to help you manage your mental health. One, get regular checkups with your general doctor. Two, stay on your treatment plan to prevent relapses. Three, find a strong support group in your family and friends. And four, never be afraid to ask for help and look for the one in signs of your illness. Remember, you are not alone. We are as close as one. Two. Three. Four. Learn about mental health illness by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. have, for instance, the GEBE that uh, instead of only patronizing uh, carnival groups to participate in the carnival event, they also came up with, as you remember, the Seniors Electricity Relief Program. Now when they say seniors, you would think that's for all the seniors. That's not the case. And when you say it is for all the seniors, it's only for those that they qualify or that they think can qualify based on the criteria that they use. Well, we have asked to show their social corporate responsibility by bringing down the fuel clause. We don't see that happening so that all the consumers can feel a relief. We don't see that happening, but we think that for social corporate responsibility, you don't only target a few people in society. You have to address all your consumers. You have to address all the people. You have also to know it's not only the ones that pay the bill. They have a family. They have children that need that relief too for them to use your electricity. Now we gave the example of GEBE. But so we have all other companies. We were, highlight, we were enlightened to see this morning that the SZV announced that they are going to shift their financial contributions to groups that ask for a financial contribution towards a social corporate responsibility of volunteering with their workers in projects or in assisting groups or organizations. This is a form of social corporate responsibility that can be applauded, yes. But we think that there are more ways for us to address with all companies and all governmental companies for them to provide more social programs for our consumers. In subsequent um, following um, press briefings, we will be informing you about that. While we are very eagerly awaiting our meeting with the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, new board next week. Because it is there that we will address with them how together they as a board of the Chamber and we as Consumers Coalition of St. Martin can do a campaign to get all the employers, get all the corporations to not only be good corporate citizens, but also be social corporate citizens. And with that said, for our meeting of next week, what we can tell you, 
what is it that we want to address with the Chamber of Commerce and Industries? To highlight a few points, the consumer price development. We see continuously the consumer prices going up. It's not the workers bringing them up. It is the employers that are selling products and services in St. Martin that are hijacking the prices. Now, we don't buy always that it has to do with the import, that the prices of the import has increased. But what we do buy is that the container fee went up because of a causeway. So we see that there are ways that we can bring down the cost for doing business in St. Martin, but also at the end for consumer prices to come down in St. Martin. Especially when we also look at the internet, what you can shop and buy on the internet individually, and it is being brought to your doorsteps with the postal services, I can tell you, you get it cheaper than when you have to buy it here. Now, we want to see, as we also indicated in the Eradication of Poverty Declaration, how, with the Chamber of Commerce, we can stimulate for the cost of living to come down, for the consumer prices to come down, for the consumer price index to come down, and as it is also the desire of a lot of employers, the cost of doing business in St. Martin to come down.